Okay, welcome to the next video in the mathematical logic sequence, talking about propositional logic and this time doing exercise 1.5.3 from the textbook. So the statement of the problem is that we will, for uh, to begin with, we will fix i some infinite set and u an ultra filter on i. Now we claim that u is trivial if and only if it is generated by some element. For the right to left, sorry, for the left to right direction, we will suppose that u is trivial. Let's recall what that means. That means that it contains so, uh, some, or sorry, uh, there is some cofinite set that it does not contain. Now, what does cofinite mean? Cofinite means that its complement is finite. Moreover, because u is an ultra filter and a is not in it, then a complement is in it. Okay, so I next want to motivate this move that I make here uh, at least a little bit because I could imagine it seeming somewhat mysterious. Why would I consider the smallest finite set in U? You know, if that's not interesting, then fast forward. But here I'm going to talk it out a little bit. You know, this comes from the off-camera work that I did to think about this problem. And basically, when I was kind of playing with it and trying to work this out, you know, we know that we have this finite set. And we're hoping, presumably, that we can like whittle it down to a singleton so that like the whole ultra filter is generated by that singleton. So how do you get started? Well, you just grab an arbitrary element and you think, well, you know, can I say something about like, is this in, uh, you know, the, the, the singleton set that I'm looking for or not? And you say, well, you know, uh, if I assume that it is, that's kind of dumb because like, you know, then everything is immediate, but how do you know that that was the one you wanted? Well, let's assume that it's not and just see what happens. And you say, okay, well, if this is not the singleton set that I want, right, if, if the entire ultra filter is not generated by this element, you know, maybe we'll reach a contradiction or something, just see where it goes. Well, because it's not in, then therefore by being an ultra filter, its complement is in, well, then you could intersect that with the finite set and then you'd get a smaller finite set, which must be in the ultra filter. So, okay, you don't really reach a contradiction, but you at least see that you could, right, if this is not the one that you want, then you could cut the set down in size and then do it all over again and do it all over again. And at each stage, you could reason that I've either found my singleton set and I'm done, or if it's not my singleton set, then I can cut it out and get a smaller finite set. That's a fine proof, although it's a bit schlocky, so that's why I chose to do this. This way is to kind of economize the proof. So let's just sort of like cut all the way down to the end, grab the smallest finite set in the ultra filter, and then try to reason that it just directly can't have some two distinct elements by a reasoning process somewhat similar to what I've already described. So anyway, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing here. So we have B, this smallest finite set in U, and we will assume for contradiction that it contains some two distinct elements. I want to reach a contradiction. I'm trying to think about like what my options are. So, well, let's just consider what if the singleton of B1 is in U, and maybe if it is, then I reach a contradiction, and if it's not, I reach a contradiction. So I think that's where my contradiction is going to come from, especially because B is the smallest. So let's think about, could I find things that are smaller and kind of get contradictions from that? So, uh, yeah, I mean, if the singleton B1 is in U, then you intersect it with B, and that's just the singleton B1, which is in U, then B was not smallest, so we can't have that. So, so the singleton B1 is not in U. But then because U is an ultra filter, its complement must be in. Now, then again, right, do closure under intersections and whatever that gets you, it must be a set, a finite set smaller than B was because we've sliced B1 out now. And then that, right, again, B was not smallest. Well, we can't have that either. So either way, this runs into a contradiction. And so we know that B, right, B cannot contain some two distinct elements, and therefore it must be a singleton set. Okay, now that we have a singleton set, it should be possible to argue that the element in this singleton is the one doing what we expect, which is to say generating the entire ultra filter. 
So let's go ahead and try to prove it. Well, since B is in the ultra filter, then every superset of it is also in the ultra filter just by closure under supersets. But then that just means that this collection of all of the sets containing the element I naught, those are all in the ultra filter. So that part of it is really quite easy. The only thing that is left to prove is that there's nothing else. So let's consider any other set and argue that it cannot be in the ultra filter. Well, take J to be any other set, which is to say J is going to be some subset of I which does not contain I naught. Well, you know, let's think about, uh, you know, what would happen if we were to, to have that in our ultra filter. Then by closure under intersections, J intersect B, right, both of them being elements of the ultra filter, is the empty set, right, because all that B has is I naught and J doesn't have it, so the intersection is empty. Now, if J were in the ultra filter, that would mean that this empty set is in the ultra filter. Ultra filters are closed, uh, or sorry, if the empty set is in, its complement cannot be, its complement is the entire set I. So we'd be saying that I is not an element of our ultra filter and you can never have that. It is always the case, just by closure under supersets, I is always a superset of anything in the ultra filter. So I always gets into the ultra filter. So you can't have that contradiction reached. There are, right, so therefore U is precisely the set of all sets containing I naught, right? It has all of them and it doesn't have anything else, so it is precisely that set and the exercise is complete. Oh, right, and then of course there's the other direction which is trivial, right? Uh, it's just immediate from definitions. If uh, U is generated by I naught, then the singleton I of I naught counts as one of those sets and then it is, uh, uh, right, its uh, complement is infinite and therefore uh, not in the ultra filter, and so you've got a cofinite set not in the ultra filter. So the ultra filter is trivial. That's it.